cleaning, inspecting, and truing these rock wheels that will go on a Fit Track 5200 and get ready to ride. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Working on this 5200 Trek OCLV onto the wheels. So this little gem had some raw vector comp wheels. These were the predecessor of all the paired spoke wheel systems out there. Trek required, acquired Rolf back in the day. Now he has his own thing again. Um, and they just got purchased by another company. So Trek had him for a little while. Rolf went his own way. Von Trekker did the paired spoke as well for a few years. And hey, guess what? Fast forward to today. Oh, we went back to just regular spared spoke with whatever. Anyway. These were the hot ticket item, which kind of cool, you know, the blue the matches the blue decaling. They did some coloring as well. Um, what makes these really cool? Super smooth hubs, paired spoke bladed system, a little lighter, less spokes up front. Still very smooth after all these years and replace these cartridge bearings. Um, these have been very, very solid. So. You know, it's one of those things where the rim well on these have been uh, pretty uh, substantial. It has a lot of meaty material on there that actually lasts a long time. So these are awesome. Even today, these still go on eBay or whatever for like two, three hundred bucks for depending what you know what kind of um, condition they're in. But most likely, these are pretty pretty awesome little wheels. So. What I'm doing to get this uh, bike refurbished is I'm going to clean these and then true them and inspect them and make sure they're ready to go on this bike. So without further ado, let's jump into the tank and wash these off, which I found out to be a lot easier than instead of hand scrubbing each one of them. Once I wash the wheels in the tank, I just use a light, um, kind of like a dish soap and scrub it down. And the reason why I use the brush is get to all these little nicks and crannies. It's a lot easier to kind of flood, flood it out and also get through these, uh, the rim itself. So I found out to work really well by cleaning the front and the rear. Um, and it's not the final phase of course, but it just gets like the initial gunk off. So we're gonna put it on the train wheel. It's um, a little more easier <laughs> and it cuts down the time that I have to scrub in that case. So working on the rear wheel first, not in any particular order. That's just kinda how I have a set up from the previous. And um, the first initial one I do, you know, I use a little bit of armor all. This is a bulk that I put in a, a bottle here since I go through so much of it and um, that way I can clean the rim as well as the tire at the same time. Um, first I just do the initial wipe down. I did check the hubs beforehand so they are smooth and not loose so I don't have to worry about adjusting those. Seal bearing ones you usually don't have to um, adjust too much anyway. Uh, they don't have to, they don't develop a lot of play like the loose bearing ones were. So essentially first I clean off the rim. Then like I do during the inspection, I go through and just kind of clean between each spoke. Like so. Then I 
clean out the spoke blades. And then I clean the hub. And doing all this, I'm inspecting all the parts. So what makes up a wheel? You got the hub, the spokes, smoke nipples on the rim, rim tape and tire and two. Um, cassette and the skewer will go on after this, but that's all the parts that are included in circumferences the actual wheel itself. So when I'm inspecting, I'm looking at all these um, spoke nipple holes, eyelets as they're called, and then sometimes they'll have a little uh, metal grommet for the spoke nipple to roll on or to spin on. Um, these are just straight onto the actual alloy rim. And that's pretty common with these uh, deeper dish wheels, uh, like so. And what I'm looking for when you're truing it, you're looking for it to go on back and forth. That's so it's centered to the rim. And also there's no hops. So it's the three dimensional thing when you're actually doing this. And typically the rear wheel will have more of the chance of being out of true due to the fact that it has most of the weight on it. Um, and also when you miss things with the front wheel, you'll sometimes smash into your rear. So that's the case, but these are pretty solid and they're pretty true to begin with. And these are kind of tricky to true because you have like these gaps. So you kind of have to, you know, do little light adjustments to get that rim to move over or not to be move over too much. So, so. that looks pretty good on that one. Oop, drop so cringe. One a many times. And this one has the old computer, so, well, the computer's off of it, it just has an old now. I like to save these magnets and use them around the shop for hanging up tools or whatever. It's kind of fun to do things like that. So, I'm gonna do the same thing on this guy. Spray my rag, I don't spray directly onto the rim, use the rag and then wipe it. That way I can coat the tire too to make it all nice and shiny. And both sides. And start with the valve core and clean in between. And here I'm inspecting and looking at these uh, spokes, making sure there's nothing that's damaged or questionable fatigue or cracks or any of that nature. So, start here. Okay. That side. And inspect on this side as well. Okay, looks good. Tape. And again, same as the rear, looking for any hops or anything. Usually this won't be as bad. And these wheels are pretty true to begin with, so it's not like I have to do a lot, a lot to them. Yeah, like so. so definitely cleaning and inspecting is very, very important part of uh, making sure that these wheels are sound and true and safe. Safe is the biggest thing. Only five, ready to go.
Spin around. So after I have the wheels trued, I go on and proceed to put the set on. I like to put a little bit of grease on this uh, free hub body. Kind of keeps it from not seizing up on there because I've had I've been in places where the, there's a lot of a lot of humidity, and if you're in a place with a lot of humidity, you know corrosion can build up underneath this, and that makes it booger to get these things guys off. So. And these are keyed, so they will go on there a certain way. And this is a nine speed. With a few spacers in there. some of the threads on this. That way it's a little bit easier to take off. Use my lock ring tool. You don't need the chain whip to, you only need the chain whip to take it off, not to put it back on. So, come on, I'm gonna catch, there we go. It's on there good. And now for the quick releases. Now obviously the quick releases are two different lengths. One's for the front, this one's for the rear. Um, what I like to do on these guys is put a little dab of grease here. Same thing for the cog. Grease these guys up. Same reason. So we don't seize up. Once the rear, onto the front. And on the front, it's not really directional wheel, but the logoing is. So if you look at the logo on the back hub here, you know, looking at it, the bike going forward, you read it this way, you wanna do the same. So you wanna do the skewer on this side. And when you do the tire, if it's directional, you wanna do the same, on the same direction. Just kind of professional touch. Also, you want the valve core to match up with your logo or the tire. Like I've referenced before in other videos of how to fix a flat, that's a good place of reference point so you know where you can track that flat or the cause of the flat down. So, wheels are ready to go on it. But first, before I do that, I need to clean these parts. Well, they are clean. I need to lube them, make sure they're ready to go, then install them, then the wheels will go on last, and we'll go from there. Until the next video, thank you for hanging out with me in the garage. See you next time. Have a great day.